So what was, I mean, just as, as briefly as you, you, you wish to, but what was your kind of path to becoming a photographer and, and getting into the line of work? Yeah, so um, I was very lucky actually, because Mad was actually um, a photographer. Um, he used to photograph um, showbiz throughout the 60s and 70s. All these amazing characters and famous faces, everyone from um, Steve Queen to um, the Beatles and the Rolling Stones. And then he actually went on to photograph the Royals um, for the Diana years and after that. So. Um, I was lucky in that I actually grew up surrounded by um, great photography. Um, and yeah, that's always, photography is always an interest had. And um, actually, I used to study journalism. So I was tossing up going into photography journalism. I actually studied journalism at um, university. And only after I finished uni that I got more into the photography side of things. So. Um, I then started off um, working at some photo agencies as a photo editor and going out and shooting whenever I had the opportunity. That's that's so interesting that your dad was in the, did the same thing in the sixties. That's amazing. Yeah, that's yeah. So cool. Is he still working now? Um, he's pretty much retired. He occasionally he occasionally goes out and shoots something, but. Um, yeah, he's just he's he's in his eighties now, so it's okay. not so easy. But he's yeah. um, That's amazing. he has his cameras every now and again. He goes out and photo photographs something. Yeah. How do you kind of manage to capture these smaller moments and much more kind of candid and natural? And I'd say that's something you can do. So how how do you kind of manage to do that, especially on kind of big glitzy red carpets and when people are being photographed and there's people shouting their names. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, I think whatever kind of um, shoot I'm going into, um, I'm kind of going into it with with, with the same objective, be it a, a rural engagement, um, a red carpet event, uh, music concerts, a portrait shoot, one-on-one, -on -one, whatever. And I think my objective is really to try and capture a bit of a bit of humanity, to capture something. Um, I suppose it goes a bit further than your your average photo to show a bit of a bit of personality um, and to show that famous face um, more, more as a human um, and I think my goal is always to try and achieve that with the most beautiful um, photo possible it's not not always possible but that's that's how I go into every job I do um, and often that this, these can come at unexpected times um, such as um, shooting the stars on the red carpet sometimes these moments come after they've been posing for photos and they're suddenly relaxed and you can capture maybe a slightly more candid moment. Um, I think the same goes for the, for the Royals. Um, I'm just looking for these, these small little moments that go beyond the, the pomp and the ceremony that you get with, with the Royals. Um, for instance, with Harry and Meghan or, or William and Kate, um, it could just be a little moment when um, they turn to each other and just give a little smile or one of them might put their hand on, on, on another one's back in, in a supporting kind of way. It's just these moments of spontaneity that um, I think with experience you learn to look out for and it can, they can come at unexpected, um, unexpected times. But yeah, just, just moments of spontaneity really and something that shows humanity. Um, and I think that's one of, the, um, one of my strong points is that I have been able to sort of work at that and um, that capture these moments. Do you do you have any kind of standout photographs or moments um, from your career? I'm sure you have a few, but maybe just one, one or two. Um, oh, there's been so many. Um, in terms of the Royals, um, I love I love going on tours um, with the Royals because they're they're a lot more relaxed. They're in more interesting um, interesting locations and um, scenarios and just um, just great opportunities for getting more unusual pictures um, for me personally one of one of the tours we did we went to um, India and uh, Bhutan with with William and Kate and that was just absolutely stunning for pictures just just two amazing countries and um, uh, Bhutan in particular was just beautiful to go and photograph um, went trucking up um, 
up a mountain with them and um, it was just so beautiful and breathtaking so from a personal point of view that was that was really special um, more recently I guess this year the highlight has been um, I took the picture of Harry and Meghan walking walking through the rain which went um, which went viral um, and that was that was a really pleasing picture to get it's one of the last jobs they were doing before uh, they were stepping down as royals so to get like a really strong picture like that um, that was so um, so well received by the public and so well used was um, was really special to get to get a picture like that before they stepped down as roles was was great. Yeah, that's that's pretty amazing. I think you'll you, you'll remember that for a while. Um, yeah. And what kind of advice do you have for people for photographers looking to get into that area? Because I know it's obviously there's so few photographers who have kind of made it and made a name and become successful in that area. Do you have any specific advice for looking to be in that world? Yeah, I think I think it's the same whatever genre of photographer photography you want to get into. Um, I'd recommend studying the leading photographers in, in that genre um, and ask yourself what, what makes them so good? What is it about those pictures and what what is it that you can try and not copy, but try and try and learn from and um, get to those heights yourself. I think you've got to um, um, be quite critical about your own pictures and look at ways that that you can in, improve it as as a photographer um, and set to set really really high standards. And you can only do that by comparing yourself to, to the best. So um, you know, really try and try and study their pictures. Um, if if you've got the opportunity, try and you know try and get to know them, find out why they became successful and what was what was driving them and try and apply some of those things to um, to your own uh, photography. I think it's a great idea if you can to to try and get a mentor that works as a, as a photographer who's, who's very well established in the industry so that you can talk to them for about a career path and maybe they can um, critique your, your pictures and um, you can learn ways to improve your photography we're all we're all learning the whole time but i think to have some kind of mentor or someone um someone you can speak to um in the industry is um really invaluable um and the other thing i'd say is particularly with um i suppose um press photography and the media and um particularly what i do which is entertainment and role photography is um you've got to collaborate really with a with other photographers and people in the industry, but definitely with um, agencies, with with newspapers, with magazines, with websites, because these are the people that are going to help you get the access. And the access is is absolutely key um, to what I do. You can be the best photographer in the world, but if you haven't got that access to these famous faces, then um, you're, you're not really going to be too successful in the kind of stuff I do. Um, so I work, I work a lot with an agency, Getty Images, um, and they help me a lot um, to get an access. But if you're just starting out, um, you're not going to have you're not going to have a big name in the industry. So you're going to need you're going to need this 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 help and collaborate with. You know, when you're starting off, it might just be a, a local a local newspaper or a website or or a magazine. So try and get in with them and just speak to them and just ask them what what kind of jobs can I do? Maybe do smaller jobs that other people aren't doing. Um, um, just get your foot in the door with them, building up um, contacts and relationships with with people in the industry. Because if you look at any big um, photographer that's made it in this way. They've, they've been working with a good agency or they've been working with with really good publications that really help them with um, access. So I think that's really key. Yeah, I think it's I think it's particularly uh, I mean, it's a particular time for, for so, so many people. But just talking about our industry. Um, it's it's hard to see in the sort of in the coming like months or two because a lot of my work um, is around you know you are very close to people um, and it does involve big crowds and it, it's events so um, it's hard to see how that's going to come back to uh, normality in in the in the coming months so we'll have to see how long it goes on for um, I think as these events do start coming back they're going to be very limited very limited access for um, 
photographers. So a red carpet event, there would be quite a lot of photographers normally. Um, they're probably going to have, I'd imagine they're going to restrict that so that we can have some kind of social distancing. Um, same goes with, with the Royals. Um, you know, they're going to be really, really careful. So they might just have a really limited amount of photographers, maybe even just one or two um, documenting their events. So I think it's going to be hard for a lot of the, us um, the prisoners to get, at least initially, um, the same access we will, uh, we were. Um, and it, it's quite worrying for the, the whole kind of arts industry in itself. Um, I was talking about Glastonbury earlier. I think a lot of smaller festivals are going to struggle to, to come to come back from this and look at um, things like the theatre world and, and and things like that and I think um, a lot of them are gonna um, a lot of them are gonna struggle to go back so there might um, at least at least initially be um, less work out there. Um, on top of that, um, newspapers are struggling, magazines are struggling, um, budgets have been slashed, so people are gonna be paying less for pictures. Um, initially so I think at least for the next year or so I think certainly for the next year I think it's going to be we're slowly start getting back to normality but I think things will be tough for um for a lot of photographers um and I think we will have to to adapt in some way and you know from a personal point of view I'm going to have to make sure if there are less photographers that I'm still getting that access and think of ways that I can work with with the artists in in other ways, maybe working more one-on-one -on -one with them, maybe doing some more portraits. Um, so I think we're going to have to adapt. Um, but any silver linings? Well, from a personal point of view, I think it's it's allowed me to slow down. I haven't been shooting so much and just just take stock, really. Um, normally, I'm so busy, there's, there's so much traveling um, that I don't really get time to sort of sit down and, and take stock and plan so much for the future. Um, but this has allowed me to to do that a little bit and do some more work on on my business things that I would normally um, get time to and and think about um, strategic other ways I can move um, within the photo industry um, and also I think that one real positive is that I'm really going to appreciate um, the work I do when I go back and not really not take things for granted um, you know not moan about stuff I'm going to go back really hungry to go out and and take pictures and I'm going to come back like more motivated than ever I think it's been um, it's it would have been a good break from that point of view so I think when I come back I'm going to be yeah really hungry and I, I can't wait to get back to situations when I can um, when I can go back to shooting these grants which you know I'm really passionate about so yeah that's a different personal point of view and, and in the meantime, you can just take amazing photographs of your kids <laughs> and just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah plenty of, plenty um, of um, photographs of the kids. So, uh, I bet, yeah. I bet. 